Welcome to the Math Ed Podcast. My name is Sam Otten from the University of Missouri, and today I am joined by Ina Apova, who is an assistant professor in the College of Education and Human Ecology at The Ohio State University. I'll go ahead and say the, because uh, I know how important that is to you folks there, but Ina, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I just had uh, Jeremy Strayer on the podcast last episode, and we had a conversation about the in front of Ohio State. How do you feel about that article there? <laughs> Um, I know there's a history to it, and you know what? Um, <laughs> I like it there. How's that? <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Ina is here to talk about her study that was published recently in the Journal of Mathematics Teacher Education, Volume 22, and the article is entitled, Expert Mathematics Teacher Educators' Purposes and Practices for Providing Prospective Teachers with Opportunities to Develop Pedagogical Content Knowledge in Content Courses. Ina, I made it through that whole title. I know, it's a long title. <laughs> good job. <laughs> but it's a good one, though. We can tell that we're going to be talking about uh, mathematics teacher educators, and we're going to be zooming in on, on content courses that happen with prospective teachers. So I really look forward to that topic, um, discussing it with you. Um, but first of all, I want to start by getting a little background on your own scholarly development. And we have a nice connection here, so I wanted to ask you about your graduate school experience. And um, maybe if you can just mention briefly a little bit about your dissertation. Yeah, um, of course. So I am a graduate um, from the University of Missouri and in Columbia. Uh, my advisor was Fran Arbaugh, and um, I was studying for, um, these were in-service teachers. So my dissertation was really on their professional development, um, their professional learning, and the learning opportunities and their reflections on learning opportunities and also their motivation um, for this continued learning in such a tough profession. Fran and I, we have this published in um, Professional Development Journal um, to, as part of my dissertation study. You know, that's, it's not quite related to the, you know, math teacher educators, but what's funny is when I was um, thinking of my dissertation, I really wanted to study Fran. So Fran trained me um, she took me to professional development sessions that she's done with teachers. And um, she, you know, we would always talk about um, kind of the next steps and things like that. And I would always ask her, how did you know to do this? How did you know to do this? How did you know to address it in this way? Mm -hmm. So when it came time to um, talk about my dissertation, I told her I wanted to study her, mm -hmm. uh, the math teacher educator. And um, at the time, um, we didn't have any framework, we didn't have any lens, kind of, you know, how would you study me? You know, we kind of thought, well, and it's N of one, um, we're not sure. Um, so we decided, you know what, it's probably either too early for our field with this kind of research, or we're not really sure how we would study one math teacher educator and how she provides and, you know, designs and delivers professional development to the teachers. So um, I studied the teachers instead yeah. <laughs> um, and their learning. Hmm. Um, and then actually I met uh, Cynthia who came into our program. Uh, so Cynthia Taylor is another um, author on this publication and she is my research partner on this project. And this particular article that we're talking about today it is part of a larger study that we um, we did with Cynthia. But when Cynthia came to University of Missouri, she ended up for her dissertation studying Catherine Cheval. <laughs> <laughs> so when she was presenting, um, I remember Fran told me, um, guess what? Cynthia studied um, Catherine for her dissertation. <laughs> and I think the two of you should talk because I know that was your passion. You wanted to do this and, you know. Yes, Cynthia and I was kind of this beautiful research marriage um, to study math teacher educators. So, yeah, hmm. that was yeah, kind of a long answer to my background question. No, no, it's good. <laughs> and we didn't quite overlap here at Mizzou. I think you finished maybe two or three years before I got here, but... There must be something going on around Mizzou because I would also, I could see the real value of studying some of the other faculty members here at Mizzou. So <laughs> there's something about the, the math ed people here that makes you kind of just want to like follow them around and, and see what makes them tick and stuff. Oh, so I it's, know. it's good that somebody's been able to do that. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, on my dissertation committee, I had um, Catherine actually and oh, okay. John, and I, I think they're still there. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, good group. 
you've uh, mentioned a little bit about how you got together with Cynthia uh, and worked on this article, but I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about um, how you got motivated to focus in on content courses with the mathematics teacher educators. Yeah, so this is part of kind of a larger project. Um, we do have some novice math teacher educators, so we have their data. I also kind of branched off on my own and um, collected data from um, mathematics faculty. Um, so these are mathematicians um, who teach content courses as well. And it was, you know, after we looked at this and we had this kind of analysis that inspired me and motivated me to kind of take another population of MTs or people who are considered MTs and work with our pre-service teachers. And it's it's interesting in our data set, we actually have um, MTs who teach methods courses and MTs who, do, who teach content courses. Um, I think we looked at content courses and so this is interesting. Um, Cynthia and I, we both teach content courses. I also teach methods courses in, because the, the content courses are in the mathematics department, but okay. I'm one of those lucky ones who mm -hmm. actually was able to um, negotiate to teach both, and the math department allowed me. Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> um, we would talk about content courses, and we knew that in our sample we had some expert math teacher educators, and we would always think about what, what do they do? Um, because we also have video data. So this, what we published, is only the interview data with math teacher educators where they get to, um, they got to reflect on their content courses and what they do and all kinds of different things. But we watched their videos and then we thought, wow, I, I don't do this. Oh, I, you know, this is very helpful. So we started taking notes on their videos <laughs> <laughs> as part of self-professional development because, um, you know, when we did the study and when this was when we were novice uh, math teacher educators, and we kind of still consider, um, I know Cynthia and I, we still talk about how novice we are in so many um, aspects of math teacher education, but we learned quite a bit. And what we realized is that there is a difference between um, this kind of a novice expert paradise when it comes to math teacher educators as well. Um, and not just by looking at us, we went and read their interviews and then we read the interviews from the novice math teacher educators and we realized there's so many things that the expert teacher educators talk about and we don't, we meaning <laughs> me and Cynthia, and we didn't find that in the sample of the novice math teacher educators. Mm. So it's fascinating to us. That was the beginning. We thought content courses would be helpful to us because we teach them. Let's mm -hmm. just kind of, we're, we're already in the data. Um, we're already taking notes. We're already coding some things. Let's keep going with just content. So we separated that in terms of the population. And then because we wanted, you know, we, we for ourselves started to learn from the expert teacher educators data. We thought, well, that's going to be our sample then. So that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. So we have this focus on the content courses and then specifically interview data with experts because you're seeing some more interesting, rich things that you wanted to dig into and understand from the expert math teacher educators. Uh, I also want to say, uh, ask you to describe the, the setting and the participants. So when you say this group of expert mathematics teacher educators, uh, what kind of folks are you talking about? So um, this is very interesting. Um, we had to kind of write about the, our distinction of, you know, why we call these expert math teacher educators. Um, because like I said, I work with a lot of mathematicians and they do have the same years of experience teaching prospective teachers. Um, and yet the two populations are, are very different, um, especially now that I've worked with them and collected data from them. Mm -hmm. So these aren't so, necessarily, it's, or you're not using veteran and expert to mean the same thing. Like veteran would mean a lot of years teaching content courses, but expert is a, something a little bit not necessarily equivalent to veteran. Right. So we um, looked at, you know, um, expertise also in teacher education and teacher preparation Um we looked at their certification um, in teaching. Um, we looked at their work in K-12 school settings as teachers of mathematics um, and those who had experience teaching children. Um, in the end, we kind of um, thought about how do we define, you know, expert experts in our field. I actually have, I know we looked at at least combined 
um, teaching experience. And when I say teaching experience, we on purpose um, did not include teaching experience as graduate students, for example, because Cynthia and I would both have that. Um, and we did not want to include that. So it's really teaching experience as a faculty of prospective teachers, but also teaching experience in the K-12 school settings or, you know, classroom settings. So our participants are, um, they have at least 15 years of combined K-12 um, teaching experience and prospective teachers. They, uh, we wanted for them to have at least a master's degree. And in fact, all but one had PhD we also wanted them to be professionally active in the field of mathematics education, you know, attending conferences, presenting at conferences, uh, publishing, and so on and so forth. So these were math teacher educators. Um, we actually ended up, um, our sample um, had, I think, eight of the participants had more than 20 years of combined K-12 experience in um, the university level teaching and then the remaining two, there was 10, by the way, mm -hmm. um, six males and four females. Um, and then the remaining two had 16 years and 18 years, um, kind of the, the combined experience. But we had the entire sample across the entire sample. Teach of the combined teaching experience of K-12 and the university level was over 25 years. Um, and that was the average, and the median was 21 years. So we knew that these folks knew a lot about teaching <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and we wanted to kind of learn from them about teaching prospective teachers but we also knew that these people are our colleagues in the field and they are active in the field so it's it's very interesting yeah but this is how we decided to really focus in on on these expert that this population of math teacher educators that we decided to call expert mm -hmm. And so in the interview data, you talk about a lot of things about the content courses, but um, the article focuses on the learning opportunities that the math teacher educators describe as occurring in their content courses. And you break those down into different categories. There's uh, learning opportunities about instruction. There's some that are about students. There's some that are about curriculum, kind of using pedagogical content knowledge sort of framing for it. But I was wondering if you could just hit a few of the highlights for us about how did the expert mathematics teacher educators describe the learning opportunities that they try to bring about in those content courses? Yeah, so this is the difference that we found. Um, I think, and there's a lot of research already out there on focusing on the content knowledge um, of the prospective teachers when we teach content courses, um, which is, you know, I think very natural too. Um, and because the goal, and for math teacher educators that we studied here for the expert MTs, that was also the goal, you know. So, but we were very surprised to see when they talked about manipulatives, for example. I read so much research on, you know, using manipulatives for prospective teachers to learn mathematics, um, to use it as a model to kind of grapple with mathematics, but it's really to learn mathematics that they will teach. Now, our, you know, MTs, expert MTs, actually went as far as, okay, after we learned these, then they created these opportunities, for example, for PTs to understand how you would teach with manipulatives. So it almost like they tapped into, there's a knowledge of, you know, the content knowledge that they had, um, or that we all have as math teacher educators. And then they kept tapping in into their knowledge about K-12 teaching their experience or, you know, their work in school settings and things like that. So, for example, just looking at manipulatives, which is under the, you know, providing pr uh, prospective teachers with kind of developing their knowledge of instructional strategies, they took that further. So they set it up station. So we have, um, I think, Odessa, one of our participants, she set up four stations in her classroom, in her content classroom with base 10 blocks. And it had specific problems and the teachers had to model how they would do it with base 10 blocks for children when they teach mathematics. So that was a very interesting kind of an extension and we didn't we didn't see that from the you know the MTs and other populations. Um, I definitely don't see that when mathematicians talk about teaching content courses and we didn't see that in the novice math teacher educators. Um, 
teaching the content courses. So it was in the same thing with, you know, knowledge, developing pre-service teachers, um, knowledge about students. A lot of us talk in our content courses and I still, I, I still do, you know, um, you start with a context of a child's work and there's mathematics that you discuss, you know, and mathematical connections in it. But then our expert math teacher educators would always go further. Um, they would tap into the K-12 or their knowledge of K-12 and they would say, how would you teach this? How would you respond to this? What kind of strategies you would use, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a whole um, area, if you read the article, they talked about the extension of that. So taking that further step in terms of the theories of student development, student cognition. So they talked about Van Healy levels and the you know trajectories and the kind of things that you would do with kids to develop that um, and the strategies. I mean, um, one of them, I don't remember who that was, but she talked about Bloom's taxonomy and really making connections of kind of mathematical development of children to the Bloom's taxonomy. Mm -hmm. We did not hear that from the other population that we have um, in our study. And again, I'm not, I don't hear that at all from working with mathematicians too. Mm -hmm. Um, And the last part, which is developing prospective teachers knowledge about curriculum. um, This was very interesting. I, I had a chance to talk to another math teacher educator in the field. And when I was kind of talking about the study, um, her response was, who's got the time to bring up all these, you know, standards and Mm -hmm. (laughs) principles to actions and all of that. Um, But what we learned is it was so important to the expert math teacher educators. Um, For example, I can probably relate to what my colleague in the field told me, who's got the time. I'm barely trying to get through the book right? Um, Whatever the book is is adopted and do the problems and do the math and kind of assign the homework and grade the homework. So our also, I think our major focus as maybe novice math teacher educators is the content to make sure that our prospective teachers understand mathematics conceptually, which for math teacher educators, that was also, um, it, it was a large part of their you know, what they talked about. So we had to separate that data and kind of find this because we found that this this is a chunk of data that we don't see from other populations in our study. But they, they made sure this was so important to them, connections to the curriculum, to the standards, you know, to the intended curriculum. They also made sure that they brought lessons specifically from third grade and fifth grade and eighth grade and kind of created this, pedagogical trajectory for, you know, prospective teachers to see how the teaching will evolve, how the student learning will evolve through the grade level. So, yeah, it, it was very interesting um, to see how much more they had kind of reflected on. Yeah. And in the article, it does come through the rich web of meanings and connections that they're having for the, the things in the content courses. And if you think about the content course as the more straightforward of the teacher preparation courses, you know, like, oh, methods, there's all kinds of interconnected issues and complexities. Content course, that's simpler. You can just focus on the mathematical ideas. And then to hear these expert MTEs talking about it and how rich the, their meaning is and how they are connecting the content to the instruction and curriculum and other things. And even though this is, you know, uh, interview data, the fact that they talk about it in these ways shows that that's going to either subtly or very explicitly kind of feed into how they, you know, actually implement the course. I think it's really interesting to think about and learn from. I also want to give you a chance to talk about this um, issue that kind of bubbled up from your analysis and from looking at the data. This issue of orientations toward teaching came up. Uh, It seemed like it came up organically. I wonder if you could maybe tell us about how that arose in the data or how it came to be included uh, in the study here. Oh, yeah. So this was one of those things that uh, we we noticed there's this um, data that only belongs to pretty much this particular population of MTEs. But there's also, um, yeah, they they talked about a very specific orientation um, toward teaching mathematics and how everything they did 
it was almost, um, you know, one of the, the things in the title that we say is the purpose, right? What is the purpose of teaching a content course? And their purpose was really a teacher's knowledge, prospective teacher's knowledge, but also beliefs about, you know, the, the subject um, at a particular grade level and how it should be communicated and presented to children and taught. Um, and it's funny. So one of the participants, Oliver, for example, he talked to us about, um, I have a quote here from him. He said, I asked them to buy principles to actions this year. Um, as a supplementary book for um, a content course. Um, and he used it as a guide for finding out the ways why he is doing specific things with pre-service teachers, but also um, pretty much referring back to kind of these mathematics teaching practices that he wants prospective teachers to not just be aware, but, you know, we're going to do an activity and this is how it's related to this. And, you know, um, so really decompose and, and for them to to see it, to have a visual model of what this, what do these principles look like in actions, right? Right. So this is principles to actions. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had many of them also mention, um, for example, the math pro- process standards from um, 2000, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Um, we had um, very explicit. Vance, for example, he talks about uh, the math practices, um, the common core. Um, so they, it's almost like they had a vision and a purpose every day for the lesson that they created for prospective teachers. And I think, again, going back to what my colleague had said um, and Cynthia and I, our discussions about teaching content courses, um, and, you know, we're, we're looking at the textbook. So textbook drives a lot of things that you do, right, and the mathematics in it. And so our lessons are pretty much within what's in the textbook. And we got this data that showed that expert teacher, uh, math teacher educators, the textbook is a resource, and then they supplement with these lessons from middle school and elementary school, or they know exactly how to set up stations to make connections to those lessons. So even if the lessons, the content, you know, course textbook, um, the lessons in that textbook didn't have those connections, they knew how to make those connections. So they tapped into their K-12 knowledge, um, K-12 knowledge of teaching, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Every time I think that they prepped um, what was also interesting, they, they had examples. So we had a follow-up interview. We had an additional interview. We coded that, and then we had a follow-up interview. And it was um, interesting that we would ask them for an example, and they had an example hmm. right away. They didn't have to think or reflect or, um, you know. Um, and they knew the examples. They knew exactly what particular math practice they wanted to address with that or what particular kind of orientation towards teaching that they wanted to address with that. It was a very interesting kind of a data set for us. Um, And we learned a lot, uh, Cynthia and I. Um, I think my own practice have changed Mm -hmm. after we, yeah, we coded the data and found all these wonderful things. (laughs) Yeah, I want to actually ask you about that in a moment. But um, before we leave kind of the the main heart of the article here, um, one thing that I noticed is that there is an emphasis on knowledge and, you know, that's a a framework that you brought to it. But I wanted to just check with you because I've been noticing this quite a bit in teacher education circles. Like, for example, when the Association of Mathematics Teacher Educators, AMTE, when they released their standards for teacher education programs, when I looked at that, I felt like it was largely framed around knowledge and the stuff that we hope that people know as they graduate to go become teachers Um, versus, you know, maybe emphasizing um, stances or emphasizing practices or skills or things like that. Um, But knowledge seems to be the the main point of emphasis. And so I I just wanted to ask you, in this case, um, was that focus on knowledge um, because of your framing of the analysis? Was it just an artifact of the way that they, the MTEs were naturally talking and thinking about teacher education. So if they think about it as knowledge, then of course the data is going to get, it's going to come out as being knowledge focused. Or do you think it was something about the fact that you were talking about content courses and maybe content courses tend to lean more towards knowledge. Whereas if you talk about methods courses or something else, maybe it would have been more practice or skills focused or, 
or dispositions or stances or something. So I, I just wanted to get your your sense of, of where that knowledge framing was coming from. So we did, I mean, we did find the stances. So orientations mm-hmm. to me are kind of like beliefs in the stance and the viewpoint of um, mathematics teaching. And I think the, the knowledge part of it is, I think when math teacher educators create their lessons, they think about the kind of knowledge that the pre-service teachers will take away Mm -hmm. from that. So it could be a pedagogical knowledge, just general pedagogical knowledge, Mm -hmm. um, because some of them talk about just group work, putting them in groups and having productive groups and for them to function in a group. So to me, that could be in science or any other course, right? So that's a pedagogical knowledge, um, general pedagogy. Um, And then there are very specific skills that, you know, uh, prospective teachers would take away from um, other courses. Um, For example, they talked about base five um, for them to really grapple with mathematics. So these are kind of understanding of base 10. So it's a very content knowledge that they have. And then there's this, you know, base 10, setting up stations. And you probably know from the right now, um, many schools are moving towards the stations kind of a teaching model, um, and they do station rotation with children in schools, at least the teachers I'm working with. Mm-hmm. For me to see that the the MTE setting up her, you know, her content course, or at least a lesson within her content course, to model that kind of teaching, um, because he or she knows that the, the population of learners that she has, the prospective teachers, will definitely see that probably in... in you know, in their uh, career. So I think the knowledge is they, they think about kind of this broader sense of what will they learn. But I, I do think that their their purpose behind it is for them to learn and develop the stances and specific strategies for teaching um, and definitely knowledge of mathematics um, that they will teach and how to deliver this mathematics or how to teach this mathematics to children so I don't know if it's knowledge if it's oriented towards like knowledge bases Um, but I I do think that you you kind of alluded to that too Um, the framework right now for pedagogical content knowledge it is framed within the knowledge and so our orientation piece that we added at the end I, I don't know if orientations come from knowledge. I think it comes from also experience and the experience that informs your beliefs and your observations that you make as a learner uh, or observations that you make as a teacher or teacher learner. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure if orientations is knowledge specific. So that might be also something that gets at your question a little better. My guest is Ina Apova from The Ohio State University, and we're talking about her article in JMTE with Cynthia Taylor. Um, So you mentioned that having done the study and the analysis and thinking about it and writing about it has had some influence on your own self and your own work as a teacher educator. I wonder if you could just say a little bit more about the influence that this analysis has had on you. Um, Well, definitely made me a better, I think, um, teacher educator when it comes to teaching content courses. It also helped me to share some of this with, um, I I think I mentioned I'm working with mathematicians who are teaching content courses. It's a wonderful group of people who I think this work has helped to inform their practice as well. Um, And, you know, I've collected data from them to see how different um, that data is. And it really is different. and I think it also had helped us to, um, we, we are looking, so this is kind of a larger study, right? So we're now looking at orientations. We're grappling with that. Um, we have been reading literature on orientations, um, math, math education literature, um, science education literature. So it's, it kind of has an impact on both your practice and research, I think, especially right now because this is our project right now that we're working on Mm -hmm. so Cynthia and I are planning on our next step is um, to look at the videos um, and code the videos um, and test some of the models that we have right now in the field 
and that would be our first step. And we still want to stay within the expert math teacher educators because of how much impact it has um, made on my practice and Cynthia's practice. And we just want to document as much as we can what are these um, what are these classrooms of math teacher educators? What do they look like? And I think they're they're just going to be really good implications and contributions to the field. Um, and then, of course, we are you know future steps is to really look at how we do see the difference. Um, what is that? How can we measure the difference, or how can we identify the specific differences between this novice expert paradigm when it comes to math teacher educators? And then um, I think the more somewhere in the future, because I'm still collecting data from uh, mathematicians who teach content courses, I think it would be interesting to see, you know, what about the people who end up teaching content courses and didn't have the preparation that we did as math, you know, math teacher educators who have gone through PhD programs that kind of um, helped us to be ready. I had internships in schools. Um, Fran took me to do professional development with teachers. So I came prepared um, to a certain extent, I think. But I, I do see, at least currently in our profession, we have people who are not quite prepared or as prepared as we are. Um, they have different experiences and backgrounds. And um, what are some things they're struggling um, so that that is my main point for the future, I think, by studying the math like mathematicians who are teaching content courses. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're having a lot of fun with our prospective <laughs> teachers. Um, uh, one thing they've been telling me is that this is the most vocal population, especially if they don't like something that we've ever experienced. <laughs> 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 so our future elementary teachers, those are the primary, you know, populations that yeah. of mathematicians that i'm studying yeah Yeah. there's a yeah there's always a lot of conversation um when we get the course evaluations back from the future elementary teachers because um yeah it can definitely go one way or the other and uh they do have thoughts about it which are actually very good to hear and to kind of you know reflect upon those as we plan for the next time the course is running and uh i also just want to say as a mathematics teacher educator myself um i just want to thank you for this work because it is has given me things to think about myself as i strive to become an expert mathematics teacher educator hopefully oh, yeah. um, but i know i do have another final question i want to ask you before i let you go and this is just a fun question um to get to know you a little bit better since we didn't overlap at mizzou so i'm sorry about that but i <laughs> am curious if you weren't in math education as a field, is there something that you could imagine yourself doing as an alternative career? Oh, that's actually, that's a very interesting question. I didn't start as a math educator. In fact, uh, my, my bachelor's degree is in econ, um, economics, hmm. and I've always wanted to study the world and the real world and you know, the business world and industry and eventually open my own company. Mm -hmm. Um, So the the mathematics part of it was very interesting. And when I came to Central Michigan, I did my master's in math to study that. So I was was very interested in just mathematics and applications of mathematics. But as a TA, I had to teach courses, and some of them were mathematics courses (laughs) that involved teachers. And you know, it was just interesting how the subject, um, first of all, I, I was challenged, I think, teaching teachers mathematics um, because I never really thought about mathematics so deeply. So um, one thing that I always get kind of mad when people say basic mathematics or elementary mathematics referring to it as easy mathematics. Mm. Um, And to me, I think it's fundamental mathematics. And to me, fundamental mathematics is very difficult, especially, I think, to truly help someone make sense of it. I can show it to you, I can tell you, but will you truly have the opportunity to make sense of it, I I think, is very difficult. So I was challenged teaching uh, mathematics for teachers. And then... It opened up a whole new area of mathematics to me that was just interesting Um, because to me, mathematics was something that was applied, um, something that helped to make sense of real world and um, business and, you know, industry and things like that. And this was kind of the mathematical structures and concepts and ideas that you have to 
dig deeper and know more mathematics to truly understand why certain things work. And then teaching it was, yeah, was kind of an additional challenge too. So, you know, that's how I became a math teacher educator. So I think that's probably, <laughs> that's my answer to that question. I actually, mathematics education ended up being my, um, yeah, career. Yeah, this is your alternative <laughs> career, <my> yes. <laughs> You're in the alternative yes. version of life. Yeah. Ina Apova is from The Ohio State University. And Ina, thanks so much for speaking with me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Uh-huh.